In the last video, we saw how to fit data with error bars, making the error either consistent or not. And that was done using the data for gasoline prices shown here, where we had the data with the experimental error, if you will, or the error in the measurement, and then one where we made the error exactly the same. We're gonna use this data to express error in fitting now, and we're gonna do so with just the standard or the error as measured fit. So let's go back to views. And so we'll get rid of this uh, fit with consistent errors. Or, you know, if I was doing this on my own, what I would probably do actually is copy and paste this so I don't work, lose the work that I've already done. And then remove this fit. Now we just have the with error fit. What I would like to do is somehow represent the error in this fit. And there's several different ways you could do this. But I think perhaps just for illustration purposes, we'll do it kind of quick and dirty, something that's not statistically completely significant, but is okay. So let's go ahead and just press fit function for now. We get a new result down in this console view. And if you don't have the console view, it's because you need to go to view, windows, and then console. And there it gives us the results of the fit. And so here is the parameter that we arrived at for A, C, and tau, and those are also given here. But what is also given is the error in those parameters for each of them that comes from the fit. And so that's what we'd like to show. You might imagine that basically what's happening is that we're raising or we're expressing that the A could be slightly higher or lower, the C could be slightly higher or lower, the tau could be slightly or lower. And so one way to represent that is to show those extremes. How to do this? Well, I think it's actually easiest to do with this fit line. And so if I look at the formatting, let's just make our lives easy, and we'll set this to a color that we like. So how about um, I could use the colors I've predefined, or I could use the ones that are present inside of views, like dark cyan. And then what I would do is I would take this, copy and paste. And so let's call this the upper extreme. You can call it whatever you want. And essentially what we're doing is we're saying, what would happen if all of these parameters deviated by going up, meaning that to 0 0.403006, we added 0 0.14366 or 336. And what's happening when we plot this is that we're basically just plotting this line with these values. And so one way to handle this is to just go in and for each one of these add in that error. So 0 0.147. Let's say we just want it to three decimal places. So what I'm doing is I'm adding in the error that was expressed here. And if I click off of that, I'll get a slightly different line that's now shifted upwards. And maybe just for ease, let's call this obscene, let's call this pink for right now so that we can see what's different about it. And then we can go in and do the same thing. I'm gonna make parentheses around tau, and then I'm gonna add the error to tau, which is 0 0.035, if we go to three decimal places, 0 0.035. And if I click off of this, it'll refresh and we'll see that I have a slightly different value again. And then I could go in and do the same for C. I don't really need the parentheses here because of the way the math works, but just for consistency's sake, Let's just go ahead and add this in. So 0.151. That should have had a zero point in front of it. And that shifted everything up as well. And so this would be the upper extreme of this fit. And you could modulate this as you like. For instance, you could multiply each one of these by something like half if you wanted or not. For now, let's just leave it as it is. I know this is different in the posted image in the assignment, but it's still giving us an upper extreme. This is basically the upper extreme where we've added in um, the standard error in the fit. Okay, what is the lower extreme? Well, now it's actually really easy to do. I'm just gonna copy and paste this. I'm gonna call this the lower extreme. And I'll just go in and every time we added in the error, I will just subtract the error. And again, what we're doing is we're just letting views 
do the math for us, taking the fit parameters that are here, and then either adding or subtracting the error that was reported down here. And then what I can do is click off, and there is the lower bounds associated with this. Now, if we wanted to show this as something like the filled region we saw before, what I really want to do is hide or unhide the fill that's shown here. Let's start with the upper so that we have this drawn below it. And let's call this again dark cyan. And then let's also make it semi-transparent, maybe something like 50% might look okay. I mean, you can play around with it if you want. That fills everything down to here. Then we have this line here. And what I want to do is fill below it, but with white. So it covers up the cyan. So I could go in here and I could say unhide so that it fills. And then I could go in and say, I want this to be white and have no transparency. And of course, once I do that, we'll see that nothing has changed. And the reason is of course the drawing order. I want this to be drawn on top of that. So I just change the order so that it appears there. And now I have this wedge of confidence. And then what I could do is say, I don't really need the lines anymore. So let's just go ahead and hide the lines for both of these. And now we have something that looks a lot like what you saw in the posted assignment. We could adjust this. For instance, maybe we don't want plus and minus the entire standard error, but half the standard error. And I think all you really do then is you just add 0.5 times that value in front of everything. And I'll just do that and then we'll be done. So I'll just go in and say that in front of each one of these standard error values. You can see that's going to scale this down some. I would do the same for the lower extreme so that I'm just subtracting half of that value in each case. And that gives me a error that will move up or a limit that will move up when I click off it. And now this looks much more like what we saw before. And so again, this is not necessarily st statistically correct, but it does at least allow us to think about how we might express these regions if we knew how to do that more carefully. And that's something again for a stats class. Here we're just thinking about how do I represent something where I know the ranges that I'm trying to show here on the data. And that's good enough for us in this class.